So, I have a video I want to make today, but first, I need coffee. So, you want to get some coffee? Let's get some coffee. Getting caught. So I got this to try and save the planet, so I gotta go inside to get my coffee. Bag secured. So I guess if I do like this cool snap, we'll be back home. So, uh... What's up guys? Today I figured we would talk about the best medium format camera for beginners, in my opinion. If you are just getting started with shooting medium format or you want to get involved with medium format and maybe you've only shot 35 millimeter or you only shot digital and you just want to you know jump right into the game there's so many medium format cameras and they range in price uh, drastically so I figured I would just maybe help you out with what I think is the best one for someone who's looking to get into it the Pentax 645N now, there is a cheaper uh, first version, the 645, but the top layout it are like these old school mushy buttons, and it's kind of hard to use. I think that, you know, they really perfected the style with the dials on top, which match, you know, most film cameras and even the Fujifilm's layout. So, what we'll do is we'll go around the camera, and then I'll show you how to load the film and throughout I'll show you some examples that I shot with this camera. I've had it since December, since Christmas, when I got it, and uh, oh man, I love this thing. So let's get into it. On the front, you have the lens, you have big old Pentax up there, um, and then you know, that's really basically it. You take the lens off using this button, you twist it, and then there you got that big ol' frickin' shutter. You'll see that there are uh, electronics, which helps you when you have the autofocus lenses, which I do not have, but I've used them, and surprisingly, they focus pretty quick. So on the side of the camera, you have the tripod mount, which is if you're doing vertical shots, and you have this little back thing, which is the nubbin, that's right, nubbin, for your strap. Really annoying to get straps for this because not many people make them. OP Tech has one that I use. Feels really good, it's just not my style. Then underneath that, you have the multiple exposure. This camera advances the film for you, so this one stops it from advancing. Then you got this, I have no idea what it is. So, you know, I've never used it, so whatever. Back of the camera, you have your film back. You have this little window where you can put what film stock you have in the camera. And to unload, you just pull that pin up, you twist it, and then twist it a little more, and it falls right out. This is where the film goes. You have the spot where you start it, and then you have the spot where your end roll is, and you wrap it around there. And I'll show you how to do that in a little. The thing that people don't like about this camera is that unlike other medium format cameras, you don't have a cased back. So on others, you can actually put a slide in and take the full back off. You don't have to finish a roll of film 
you can switch between different rolls. This one you do have to finish the roll before you take it out. It's not a big deal for me. You just finish the roll anyway. On the other side, you have another nubbin for the camera strap. You have your handle. Up here you have a lever which stops down your camera. The bottom, you just have tripod mount and your pistol grip battery, which the thing takes six double A's. Personally, I think that's the greatest thing ever because um, I travel a lot and I didn't want to have to worry about bringing special batteries for this thing. Um, so I mean like you can literally go any store anywhere and I bet they have AA batteries. It also doesn't really add to the weight that much, as much as you would think. The thing's already heavy so I do enjoy that. So up top you have your shutter button. It has a screw in for a shutter release cable. You can shoot in single, continuous, or self timer. Self timer is set to 12 seconds. Continuous I believe is three frames a second. Then over here, you have these two buttons which are used to change the ISO. You have your on, off, and noise switch, which is really cool. Um, if you set it for noise and you focus, it will make a noise when wherever your focus point is, is in focus. So really hard to miss focus on this thing. It also shows a green light at the bottom of the viewfinder, which is nice. You then have your little LCD screen, which tells you what shot you're on and then your ISO, as well as, if you see that little D up there, the D tells you um, that it's going to print on the edge of the film your settings. If you ever wanna know, you can go back and see what your settings were, and it does not affect your image whatsoever. It's on the edge of the film, so when you're scanning, you don't see it. Next up, you have your shutter speed dial, which has uh, auto as well as bulb, and underneath that you have the metering, which is either center, spot, or evaluative, which is really cool. And a little underneath that, you have autofocus points. On the other side, you have exposure compensation. And then underneath that, you have where you control your ISO, as well as your bracketing. Underneath that, you have either servo or single point autofocus. And then I missed this little guy, but coming back to the grip, you have ML, which is it's your settings lock. So if you, you know, are metering for the shadows, you'd press that and it locks those settings in. The aperture is on the lens, spins, it has auto, as well as your focus. A cool thing about this camera is that if you have no idea what you're doing, you just wanna shoot auto, all you do is set every single setting to the green setting. So green here, green here, green there, green there. You need to go green here and the camera becomes fully automatic. If you are just starting out and you have no idea, you can literally set this thing to full auto and just set everything to green. Another great thing about this camera is how big the viewfinder is. You really don't need the focus alert, but it's so clear when you have things in focus, which is super nice. I'm also an idiot because I forgot the hot shoe mount. I've never used it, so. I forget it's there, but it's there if you need one. Don't forget about that. So I'll show you guys how to load the film. We're gonna put some XP2 in there and we're gonna set it to 100 because it is a 400 speed film, but it expired in 99 and you're supposed to overexpose one stop for every 10 years that it's expired. So we're gonna take this out of the box. Once it's out of the box, you got it in this little wrap thing. So we're gonna take it out of the little wrap thing. Bang, bang, here it is, your roll of film. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna, let's see if I can get this way, you're gonna do is you're gonna flip that up and you're going to spin it counterclockwise, twist it a little more, 
and you're gonna pull out the backing. Have a backing already on the end roll side. So you wanna clamp that down and now you wanna put the film you wanna shoot on the start side. So you're gonna flip that piece up right there. You're gonna take your film. You're gonna peel this little sticker off. That's a sheet, that's the black sheet that protects the film and it's gonna say unexposed. You take this and you want this black side to be facing out like this because that's gonna be hitting the light and that's where your film is gonna be on this side. You take this and you line up this piece to that metal piece right there. Once you have that done, you drop this lever down so your film is locked in. Then what you do is keeping this tight, you pull it down, adjust this so you have the slit and you take the nub and you tuck it into the slit and you advance and then once it catches you go back to this side and the more you spin you'll see the arrow. You want the arrow to line up with this little red line right there. So you spin it and there you go. You then take your film canister, put it back, you twist it a little bit, lock it in, and then you lock and flop that guy down. It advances f the film for you, so you, all you have to do is turn it on. We're gonna change the ISO. We're gonna push this to ISO, and we're going to press this button down until it says 100. Your first shot is gonna say zero, all you do is press the shutter button and it starts to load. And there you go. When you take your last shot, it rolls it up for you and then you can pop the back off and your film's closed. That's my overview on the Pentex 645N. And like I said, I think it's the best beginner camera um, in medium format world for beginners who are looking to get into it. The camera is also not that expensive. If you find the right one on eBay or you know Facebook Marketplace, let's see how much we can find one on eBay for. You can get an excellent plus. I don't know if you can see this. Plus, 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 plus from my boys over at Japan with a lens and a strap for 640. Plus, 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 plus. A lot of pluses so really that's it like I said I love this camera I would recommend this camera to anybody I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it helped you out if you're looking for a medium format or if you're confused on how to load uh, the film onto this that was today's video uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I'll see you when I see it